Magandang gabi po sa lahat ng nakikinig sa atin. Dito lamang sa ating Radio Migrante sa CHRY 155 FM, your leading source for diversity. Marin nyo rin kaming pakinggan sa www.chry.fm at iklik lamang ang Listen Live, Bell 5 973, Rogers Digital Cable 945 o sa tunein.com sa inyong mga web browsers or sa inyong mga smartphones. Ang makakasama po ninyo ngayong gabi ay inyong mga tagapaglingkod na si Rhea Gamana at Ish Cabana. Magandang gabi, Ish. Magandang gabi. <laughs> <laughs> Bakit mo ako ginagaya? <laughs> Oy, ma, uh, magandang magandang Maayaw, gabi po sa... Magbibisaya uh, ka na ata. <laughs> uh, uh, hindi. <laughs> sorry. No, no. Feel free, man. <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry kasi, ano, hindi ako magbibisaya. So I won't uh, let uh, you indulge dun sa inyong language. Anyway. Ayun. <laughs> magandang umaga po sa mga tagapakinig natin di, uh, dyan sa Pilipinas. At sa ibang parte ng mundo, magandang magandang uh, anumang oras dyan sa inyo. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi 10 to 11 ngayon sa Pilipinas, no? Tsaka mm-hmm. wherever. Yeah, is, at ngayon yung ano, uh, pinakamahabang gabi daw sa buong taon. Kasi oh. ngayon yung winter solstice eh. December 21. Yes, yes. Nagsimula ng winter solstice. My Oo. goodness. <laughs> My goodness. Malamig na naman ba? <laughs> sabi, sabi daw sa forecast ay ano eh, uh, dry daw yung ating winter eh dito. Yeah, so wala lang walang white <coughs> christmas kumbaga mm-hmm. anyway, <laughs> anyway ha- happy birthday ate kati yes happy birthday po kati carpio yes. ng fmwm mm-hmm. all right at It's happy a- birthday sa lahat ng nagbo birthday <laughs> <laughs> kinukuha mo yung aking linya <laughs> oh hindi ah <laughs> oy oh. tsaka dun sa mga na tag- kaka-tune in lang uh, kung gusto niyo magpabate pwede po sa huli ng show at uh, uh, sa mga gusto magpabate Merry Christmas at Happy New Year mamaya ay, ayun <laughs> pero anyway ang pag-usapan natin ngayon exactly. gabi ay mm. tugmang-tugma sa ating programa kasi Radio Migrante tayo di ba exactly mm, International mm. Migrants Day mm. which is Mark Uh, December 18th. So, nakalipas na pero ginugunita pa rin natin yung mga uh, nag-alay ng buhay, yung mga nasa Wimpalad at yung mga nagpupursigay pa rin mga uh, manggagawang migranteng Pilipino mm-hmm. saan man sa mundo. Patuloy Kat- na nagsaks- nagsagsasakrip issue mm-hmm. para Ka- sa mga pamilya. Katulad nga nung sinabi nung sa kanta ni Carl Ramirez. Ang ano daming references eh. No? <laughs> Just, ano, ating ah, sa ating ating song. <laughs> ano yun? May ikokote ka ba? Hindi, wala. wala. Oh, wala. Okay. <laughs> okay, so bago po ang talakayan, actually, sino ba ang ating kakausapin mamaya? Ay si Connie Sorio po ng International Migrants Alliance at Migrante Canada. Mama, mamaya po yan, uh, mga around 9.15 po. Pero bago po yan, ay news and headlines muna tayo. Kaya I guess ako mauna. There you go. Philippine Sus Kuwait Employer for Pet Lion Attack. Ito po ay nagmula sa philstar.com. The Philippines filed a case against the employer of a Filipino overseas worker killed by a pet lion. Vice President Jejomar Binay said, Lawyer Raul Dado 
Consul General of the Philippine Embassy filed a complaint for criminal leg- negligence resulting in homicide against Lourdes Abejuela's employer in Kuwait, Binay said Friday. Abejuela died days after being attacked earlier this month by a lion owned by her employer of 15 years. She was reported doing laundry on the rooftop where the lion is kept. The cage was left unlocked and the lion attacked her. Abejuela's friend said the employer asked her not to tell the hospital and authorities what happened to her. End quote. So when she was in the hospital, she was released immediately. End quote. Nieva Edolientes said in a previous report. Under Kuwaiti law, residents are not allowed to own lions and other wild animals as pets. And for our second news, U.S. Marine in Philippine murder case makes first court appearance. This is from Reuters. The Marine Joseph Scott Pemberton, who is being held at a U.S. facility at the main Philippine Army base, was charged with the murder of Jeffrey Laude, who was found dead on October 11th in a hotel in Olongapo City, northwest of Manila. Jeffrey Laude is self-identified as Jennifer. A handcuffed Pemberton appeared in court wearing a black suit and striped tie. He said quietly flanked by U.S. security officers as his lawyers asked the court to spend to suspend proceedings in a standard trial tactic. Laude's sister, Maridu, had f- mixed emotions on seeing Pemberton for the first time. In quotes, I wanted to ask him why he killed my brother. I wanted to bang his head against the wall. I wanted to be angry, but I'm also afraid. End quote. The lawyers argued that the justice department should first decide on their first appeal to reverse the decision to indict Pemberton. Authorities will need to ta- will need time to resolve the issue, but the court will decide on the defense bid at a hearing on Monday. In quotes, there was an appeal to reverse the prosecutor's resolution to charge Pemberton with murder for the death of Jeffrey Laude. There was no arraignment today, but the court now has jurisdiction over Pemberton. We are not aware of his appeal. We will oppose it. He should be detained in a local facility. End quote. According to George Virgi Suarez, a lawyer for the victim's family, who told reporters uh, who, who were barred in the court. The U.S. Embassy this week rejected a foreign mi- ministry request to hand Pemberton to Philippine authorities, citing the Visiting Forces Agreement, or more popularly known as v- VFA. Legal rules on the treatment of airing servicemen are laid out in the 1998 pact signed by Manila and Washington to allow U.S. forces to hold military drills in the Philippines to test the readiness of the Allies. And for our last uh, news uh, item, uh, this is actually a press statement from Migrante International. Migrants' rights advocates plea, Pope of the poor, fight for us. Pope of the poor, fight with us. We are Filipino migrants, immigrants, refugees from all over the world who together with our families call upon your eminence to bear witness to our struggle. We call on you to speak in behalf of overseas Filipinos in our quest for a better life. We have experienced firsthand human and labor rights abuses and exploitation. Hear our stories and join us in our fight against modern day slavery. Of present, an estimated 15 million overseas Filipinos are found in over 230 countries. Massive unemployment, landlessness, poverty, and globalization have been forcing our countrymen to migrate. There exists a widespread desolation, hopelessness, and desperation to have caused the Filipino people's diaspora. Pope of the poor, fight with us. In your tenet to build a church without frontiers, mother to all, we likewise reach out to you with open arms and hearts for our common objective to open the doors of your church worldwide in the spirit of genuine service to the people. Like you, we stand firm that forced migration is an anomaly and a matter of deep concern involving the lives and dignity of our migrants wor- migrant workers. Ours is, not an, is now an era of modern-day slavery, wherein our migrant workers and their families are subjected to most cruel conditions in favor of greed for remittances and the desecration of human rights. Pope of the poor, fight with us. We have seen the absence of legal frameworks that genuinely promote and protect the rights and welfare of our OFWs and their families. <clears throat> we have dissected and evaluated the efficiency or lack thereof of existing government programs and discussed ways to bring this to the concern of our authorities. 
we realize that the Philippines has many policies and laws and migration that need to be translated into concrete action. We have seen that the continuation and intensification of the government's labor expert policy would only add more to the sufferings of our people, making them more vulnerable to human and labor rights abuses. We ask of you to speak out against this policy. We need to address the fundamental conditions of our society, especially the unequal distribution of wealth and work among nations which drives our people to forced migration. Pope of the poor, fight with us. We agree with you that human trafficking is indeed, a, in quotes, a crime against humanity, unquote. It is a violation of our fundamental rights. It breeds the evils of discrimination, criminalization, and of undocumented migrants and all forms of violence, oppression, and enslavement. We are also greatly disturbed by, by, and moved by the tragedy of the separation of families. We cry for the sufferings and pains of children left behind and growing up without proper guidance, parents and couples estranged from each other, and the resulting economic, emotional, and psychological implications of loved ones being uprooted from their families. We call on you to work hand-in-hand -hand with migrants organizations and advocates in support and of the plight of our Filipino migrants. There are still many things that need to be done, Pope of the Poor fight with us. We call on your eminence that through your office you can help us in organizing and broadening our reach and making our voices resound. There's a dire need to consolidate our efforts in various parts of the world. Together, let us face the challenge of holding the cause of mig Filipino migrants and their families. Pope of the poor, fight with us. In the spirit of service to the people together, let our aspirations and advocacies be realized. So that is a statement actually from Migrante International calling for the uh, Pope who is coming to the Philippines uh, in recent in the following week in following days and um, urging him to to work with the common people there as there are building or as there are tensions building especially for the victims of the typhoon Yolanda or typhoon Haiyan that uh, wraps up our news segment for t tonight uh, mm -hmm. December 21st 2014. Gaya ho ng sinabi natin kanina ay uh, makakausap natin live via phone patch si Connie Sorio. Siya po ay miyembro ng International Migrants Alliance at uh, siya din po ay kasapi din ng Migrante Canada. Pero bago po yan, ang December 18 pala ay isang special day no, para sa mga sektor ng malaking uh, populasyon ng mga Filipino, Philippine National Production, that is the Overseas Filipino Workers or shortly and more popularly known as OFW. So ngayong 2000, the United Nations proclaimed the date in 1990 when the UN General Assembly adopted the International Convention on the Protection of the Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families and with the Philippines being one of the world's biggest sources of migrant workers, it was fitting that the first event to mark the special day was held at the UN office in Manila. Please welcome po, Connie Sorio. Magandang gabi po, Tita Connie. Hi, magandang gabi, Rhea, at magandang gabi po sa lahat ng mga tagapakinig ng Radyo Migrante. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagpapaunlak ninyo dito sa amin sa Radyo Migrante. <laughs> Walang ano man, Rhea, um, yung, yung topic is very important, so, you know, <laughs> exactly. we need to discuss this. Yeah. Exactly. Ish. Yeah, Ulan. so, nagbigay na po kami ng, ano, no, ng brief na intro kung paano nasimulan itong pagsaselebra ng International Migrants Day. Pero, mm -hmm. uh, pwede nyo po ba kami bigyan ng ano, dahilan kung ano yung nagbunsod sa United Nations upang iproklama yung December 18 bilang International Migrants Day? Well, um, in the last, you know, uh, two or three decades, yung, yung massive yung movement ng, ng migration, ano, yung, yung hindi lang simply people wanting to to go to another place to look for a greener pasture or to have a better life. Pero nag ano nag iba yung nag iba yung face nito because many of those people who migrated were forced to migrate. Kahit ngayon, um eto na yung sinasabi na forced migration. Eh. So, kinakailangan uh, na ang United Nations should respond to this, you know, um Explo yung exploding uh, phenomena. So, kaya nga na, i na, i na ratify yung, ano, yung UN Convention on the Rights and, uh, and the Rights of, of 
Sorry. On the rights of their families? It's on, the, on the rights of the migrant workers mm-hmm. and their families. Mm-hmm. Yung, yung ganyan. Mm-hmm. Tapos, ma, ano yung, ano, importante yung sinabi kanila ni Ray, ana, uh, the Philippines being one of the biggest ano, sending country when it comes to migrant workers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Il- ilang ilang uh, bilang po ba ang pinag-uusapan natin dito? Ang ang Pilipinas, uh, approximately 10% of its ano ha, uh, able-bodied uh, population are out of the country. So when we say 10% ng able-bodied, ito yung ages ranging or starting from uh, the late teens, 19 to 35. Mm-hmm. And 10% na ang, ang population yata natin ngayon uh, ay umaabot na ng 94 million. So, uh, ano yun, 10% ng, ng, ano, ng nasa prime age are outside of the country working as migrant workers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tapos, tapos parang, uh, if, you can, if you can imagine it, uh, 5,000 Filipinos leaving the country every day. Mm-hmm. And majority of those are women. So, may imagine mo na lang yung ano yung yung mga dapat na nag na, na, sa Pilipinas para mag-contribute sa sa ikauunlad natin, yung mga pinag-aralan na, na na ano ay magamit doon, pero hindi lumalabas sila ng bansa para sa ibang bayo, sa ibang ibayo magtrabaho at ibuhos yung kanilang talento. Mm-hmm. In connection to that, uh, Tita Coni, um, siguro po, uh, pwede po ninyo sigurong mabigyan, no, yung mga listeners natin ng, uh, ng general overview ng kalagayan ng mga kababayan nating migranteng Pilipino. Um, alam natin, or yeah, uh, dito na lang sa Canada, mm-hmm. uh, karamihan o lahat ng mga migranteng manggagawa ng Pilipinong nandi dito, ay una, hindi sila iba yung trato sa kanila. Kung baga sa ano, eto yung mga tinatawag na disposable labor, eh, disposable mm-hmm. workers. Mm-hmm. You are here in a contract. If your employer does not like you or hindi gusto yung kilos mo, yung trabaho mo, they can fire you anytime and they can send you back home anytime. Tsaka, ang, ang isang ano dito kasi lahat ng mga pupunta dito as migrant workers are tied with their employers. So, if if you have problems or your, your employer is terminated you, it's not easy for you to find another job because you have to go through another process of getting yung labor market opinion, getting another employer, and have it approved ng Canadian government. Ano? So, isa, isang malaking factor yan that leads to ano, vulnerability ng ating mga migranteng Pilipinong nandi dito. Kasi ayaw nilang masira yung kontrata nila. So, they, they, they take they take and take it na lang yung exploitation at abuse. Ang um, kad- yung usual na um, experiences of exploitation and abuse yung long hours of work, no walang overtime pay, pinapagtrabaho ng mga trabaho ng hindi naman nakasaad sa kanilang kontrata, tapos yung iba kinukuha yung kanilang passport, tinatago yung kanilang travel documents para hindi sila umalis doon sa kanilang employers. Mm-hmm. And uh, and, and I've seen this. Um, nung nagkaroon ng moratorium dito sa Canada on restaurant and food workers, um, marami yung, ano, yung apektado. Tapos hirap talaga sila at takot sila na para sila uuwi ng Pilipinas, saan sila pupunta? Ngayon na nagkaroon ng moratorium at hindi na i-renew yung kanilang contracts. Eh, ang laki-laki ng utang na binayaran nila to pay the recruiters to bring them here to Canada, right? Mm-hmm. So, iyan, isang aspect din yan ng, ano, ng karanasan ng ating mga kababayan. Tapos, yung, yung women migrants natin are very vulnerable to, ano, to, to sex exploitation or yung, yung, yung gender violence ba? Mm-hmm. yung ganyan. Mm-hmm. So, Tita Coni, nabanggit nyo na nun no, yung moratorium at saka yung mga pagbabagong naganap lang kamakailan dun sa Temporary Foreign Workers Program at saka yung sa Live-In Caregiver Program. 
may ano po ba, may komento ba ang uh, konsulado ng uh, Pilipinas dito or kahit saan man sa ano sa sa banda ng Canada, may any any com- any comments from them as a response? <laughs> Actually, that is very ano yung very very sad and very infuriating too kasi alam naman natin na ang malaking revenue that comes in or goes into the Philippine government comes from the remittances of the mm-hmm. migrant workers ano mm-hmm. pero when it comes to ano policies from host countries or receiving countries that directly impacts on migrant workers walang sinasabi ang ating gobyerno mm-hmm. yung yung um I've never seen a press statement or never heard them on the radio or anywhere saying or being critical of these policies mm-hmm. or even saying what the impact of these changes in the immigration and labor policies would have to Filipino workers. Mm-hmm. At particular doon yung kaso ni na uh, Evelyn Bumatay Castillo at Marites Angana uh, dito sa Toronto in uh, particular. Uh, meron po ba kayong mga updates doon sa mga kaso nung bawat isa? Um, yung, yung, yung kaso ni Evelyn Bumatay Castillo, um, first of all, we were able to bring his her son uh, dito sa, sa Canada. He arrived uh, nung noong 6th ng December mm-hmm. and he was able to he was able to ano to attend yung funeral service na ginawa noong 14th sa St. Pascal Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Tapos uh, there was uh, an exclusive interview with uh, CBC doon sa case ni ano no ni Evelyn. Pero ito yung gusto kong ano, ito yung gusto kong linawin. Mm-hmm. Kasi nung unang lumabas yung yung nung unang lumabas yung balita tungkol kay Evelyn, she was tagged or called as a sex trade worker. Mm-hmm. Um, tapos siguro crit- criticism ko din ito sa ating community na parang parang binaliwala natin yung pagkamatay niya kasi parang may stigma ba sa atin? Ay kinahiya ba natin? In the first place, hindi pa naman tapos yung investigation to really say or to prove na ganun nga siya. Mm-hmm. Ang gusto ko lang sabihin, Evelyn has a legitimate employer. She was working as a live-in caregiver, taking care of three children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, tapos, hindi natin alam kung ano ang storya doon sa buong pangyayari. But what I want to flag is the fact that kung meron mang ganun, mm-hmm. the more we have to look deeper. And I've spoken to the police investigator uh, handling her case that we should look deeper. Kasi dito posibleng pumasok yung, ano eh, yung issue ng trafficking. Mm-hmm. Dahil for them to say na e- Evelyn was able to set herself up as an independent sex worker. Evelyn is here barely two years, was here barely two years. She arrived uh, January 2013. So mag to two years siya. No, yeah, January Yeah, January 2013, magta two years siya at yung next January 2015. Mm-hmm. So how could she know, knew yung pasikot-sikot? unless meron talagang nag uh, you know may may operator mm-hmm. but regardless of that i think we have to look at the consulate and even and, and the, the Canadian government should look deeper into this kasi maliban kay Evelyn meron pa akong ibang naririnig na may ganung kaso mm-hmm. at ang 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 nakakalungkot ngayon kasi yung mga kababaihan involved are not talking because they they are scared yung yung ganun so mm-hmm. eto ba yung gusto nating idagdag pa sa mga cases ng ating kababaihan mm-hmm. so uh, gusto ko ring ano eh, gusto ko ring yung yung tanungin yung itanong yung bakit nga ba lumalabas ang mga Pilipino sa ating bansa mm-hmm. considering na Noong last Saturday, I gave a presentation about mining in the Philippines. I want to connect these two issues eh, kasi it's very important. Ang Pilipinas ay napakayaman po sa natural resources or mineral resources. We are number three sa gold deposits. We are number five sa copper deposits. And we are number one sa nickel. And, and we're talking about world deposits. 
yung valuation ng ano ng nickel na lang is about 1.4 trillion US dollars. Can you imagine yung 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 wealth ng ating bansa? Pero bakit tayo naghihirap? Bakit karamihan, bakit kailangan lumabas ang karamihan ng ating mga kababayan para lang mabigyan nila ng ma Uh, makapag-provide sila sa kanilang pamilya, mapad- ma- mapadala nila sa eskwelahan yung kanilang ma- mga anak, at makapag-silbi ng three meals a day. And this is because of the of the wrong priorities of our government. Yung, yung mining concessions, yung mining rights, with the Mining Act of 1995, ay binibigay lahat sa mga dayuhan. To the extent na yung mga kababayan natin na nakaupo dun sa mina na yun are being displaced, their, their rights are being violated, they're being killed when they set, get, you know, when they put up a resistance, para lang biglang daan at biglang bigyang laya yung operations nitong mga mining companies. Mm-hmm. And not to forget that we have this executive order allowing large scale or multinational companies to to hire private and public security forces mm-hmm. to to secure their interests right so after na ating mga kaubayan mm-hmm. because they were displaced because you know na destroy yung kanilang food resources lumalabas sila ng ano ng ng bansa para maghanap ng trabaho mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ang isang napaka-classic example na yan, ang isang napaka-classic example is, you know, the presence of Canadian mining companies in the Philippines. And we have a few Canadian mining companies plundering our mineral resources. And many of those communities that are displaced, some of the women are here in Canada working as living caregivers. Mm-hmm. Makita niyo yung ano, di ba, yung hindi ko, gusto kong magalit at gusto kong ano, kasi parang double whammy yung, yung kinuha, ninakaw na yung yaman mo, mm-hmm. then is place ka na, tapos pumunta ka dito, pinagsatamantalahan ka pa rin. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Mm-hmm. So, isang, isang ano yan na kung 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 merong significance ang International Migrants Day is for us Filipinos to 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 educate you know to know more about our situation to know the situation in the Philippines and not to deny yung yung difficulties and racism and discrimination that we're facing here mm-hmm. and that we should be more vocal we should be organized to set up yung resistance and ano, uh, fight against this. Mm-hmm. Kasi sinasabi ko nga, mayaman tayo. Bakit tayo laging naka, ano, naka, nakabaw ang heads natin? Mm-hmm. Kailangan uh, nakataas noo tayo and, and, and to tell the world na we come from a very rich, fam- or na- rich uh, country. Ikokonek ko din yung sinabi mo, Tita Connie, no? Kasi binabasa namin kanina yung uh, Republic Act Uh, 122, which is an act to amend the Republic Act 8042. Otherwise, it is known as the Magna Carta on Migrant Workers and Overseas Filipinos Act of 1995. Mm-hmm. Et, eto ho, magbabasa ako ng isang section. It was a section first, sorry, section one paragraph E ng RA 8042. Ito ang sinasabi nila, free access to the courts and quasi-judicial bodies and adequate legal assistance shall not be denied to any person by reason of poverty. In this regard, it is imperative that an effective mechanism be instituted to ensure that the rights and interests of distressed overseas Filipinos in general and Filipino migrant workers in particular, whether regular slash documented or irregular slash undocumented are adequate, adequately protected and safeguarded. Ang tanong ko po, nasaan ang hinihintay na tulong mula sa gobyerno ng Pilipinas? Nakasaad naman pala to sa Constitution ng, uh, ng Republic of the Philippines. <laughs> Alam mo, ang, ang Pilipinas, if, if you look at yung mga legislation sa mga republic acts at sa mga laws na naka in place sa Pilipinas uh, karamihan people outside of the country the international community would think that ang Pilipinas ay isang modelo of democratic 
country. Mm-hmm. Pero kung titignan mo talaga kung nasaan, when it comes to implementation and how this, you know, legislations and, and republic acts uh, are being implemented, wala eh. Kasi etong recent case ni Marit Isanga, uh, namatay siya um, under investigation yung sinasabi ng ano ay aneurysm daw pero uh, kinocontest pa yan ang nakakalungkot kasi dumating siya dito noong October uh, release sa pan-arrival kasi yung kanyang travel not travel but yung kanyang recruiter siguro sa laki ng perang hiningi sa kanya uh, bogus illegitimate yung kanyang contract Mm-hmm. So she was released uh, when she arrived. Nakakuha siya ng panibagong employer, but the papers were not ano, uh, in place yet. Pero wala siyang mapuntahan, matirahan. So she was living in, and I would say started to work with his employer, right? Without the LMO, without the proper uh, work permit. Tapos nangyari ito. Ang nakakalungkot kasi ang sinasabi ng ano ng konsulado, wala silang pera, wala silang support na maibibigay. Hindi member ng OWA si Marites kasi walang employer. And so, hands off sila. Kasi din ang nangyari dito sa case ni ano ni, ni Evelyn. Mm-hmm. Na wala silang financial support or legal support na ipo, maipo-provide doon sa ating mga kababayan. And this I just two of the cases na alam na hinawakan natin, hinawakan ng Migrante Canada, na walang suporta at tulong na naibibigay ang konsulado dito when it comes to yung ano yung support to distressed workers or support to nationals. Mm-hmm. Ish? Mm-hmm. So, uh, sa habang nagkukwento kayo, no, iniisip ko lang, paano na susustain na ng migrante, uh, international migrante organizations, yung pag uh, paglalarga dun sa mga kasong particular na ganito, habang uh, binu- uh, binibigyan natin ng boses yung uh, mga karaniwang tao, dun sa mga, sa, go- sa gobyerno, kung, kung baga, paano natin hinuhold accountable yung go- gobyerno at the same time? Paano yung nasusustain ng Migrante Canada? Ito? Well, lahat ng miyembro ng Migrante Canada, and we have chapters almost in different provinces across Canada, no? Lahat dito ay volunteer volunteer time. Mm-hmm. Uh, lahat ng mga miyembro at saka opisyalis ng Migrante Canada are doing this work on a voluntary basis. So walang bayad, walang walang overhead expenses when it comes to office and rentals, no? Rent. And at ano uh, do naman sa ano how do we make the the Philippine consulate or the Philippine government accountable ang dami na nating kampanya na isinagawa muna dyan yung pagbubukas ng pag-extend ng consular services pag-extend ng hours nila kasi bukas sila ng Monday to Friday pero ang mga workers naman ay nasa trabaho mm-hmm. ng Monday to Friday so we demanded that they should open at least one Saturday a month or two Saturdays a month tapos pangalawa, magbukas sila ng consular offices sa mga provinces na wala. Pero nandun yung concentration ng migrant workers. For example, Alberta. Mm-hmm. Uh, nandun ang karamihan, karamihan, maraming maraming migrant workers na Pilipino ang nandun. And yet, walang consular office. So, yung mig- migrante natin ay kailangan pang pumunta either sa, sa Winnipeg, o kaya sa Vancouver o kaya sa Toronto to process yung kanilang mga papers. Pero ang pinakamahigpit na accountability, actually I was thinking about this too when I was talking na, mm-hmm. bakit hindi nga tayo mag-launch ng isang class action suit against, you know, this Magna Carta? Mm-hmm. Yung, yung Magna Carta ng migrant workers. Because, because we have documented cases where you know the, the the Philippine consulate did not provide support did not both in terms of financial assistance of you know uh, material assistance and mm-hmm. even yung presence yung representation doon sa mga distressed at saka mga nationals na nagkaka problema mm-hmm. Speaking kasi so, ng, ano, tita, sorry tita ko niya, ano ko lang, kasi ang an daming pera eh, nung sinasabing financial assistance, may 50 million pesos na mula sa contingency fund of the president, may 30 million, nasan tong mga perang to? Eh, dapat sana, 
na 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 disburse para sa ano no sa rights and welfare ng mga manggagawang Pilipino, migranteng Pilipino. Well, yung isang anum nating uh, kwento ay ginamit yung 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 pundo na para mapunta sa mga migrant workers. And this is not, you know, uh, this these are monies from migrant workers who paid for their OWA and for other fees exacted from them when they were leaving the country, right? Mm -hmm. When they were processing their papers. Ang alam natin, ginamit ito sa eleksyon ng mga nakaraan, doon sa mga projects ni, ni Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, yung, yung ganun ba? So yung issue ng corruption is still very, very big. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. sa, sa Pilipinas, yung corruption, yung pork barrel, tapos Ano, yung 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 total insensitivity and this complete disregard sa karapatan at ano uh, sa sa rights and welfare sa karapatan at ka, kagalingan ng ating mga migranteng Pilipino. Mm -hmm. Uh, Iko-connecta ko rin yan kasi nung mga nakaraang taon ay naglunsad ng kampanya yung Migrante International Zero Remittance Day. Lalo pa ngayong uh, kapaskuhan, uh, madaming mga kababayan natin ang nagpapadala ng remittance nila pa balik sa Pilipinas. Ano uh, ano po bang tingin ninyo sa posibilidad na maglunsad ulit ng ganitong kampanya? Lalo pa't may uh, connection ito sa corruption sa Pilipinas. No, I think ano, it worked in the past mm -hmm. na Uh, yung yung isang araw na lahat ng migranteng Pilipino na nasa labas ng bansa ay wag mag magre-remit magpapadala sa araw na yon malaki ang impact nito doon sa 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 dollar reserves at saka ano ng Pilipinas ano and i'm just thinking pwede natin itong gawin ng isa dalawa o isang linggong walang remittance tignan natin kung ga gaano ka ano ang ekonomiya ng bansa mm -hmm. na mag na mag ano na mag function without the remittances of ano of our migrant workers mm -hmm. kasi i think that's the well for one mm -hmm. isang economic power yan ng mga migrante na siguro hindi pa nare-realize ng karamihan Mm -hmm. Tita Connie malapit na tayo magtapos sa ating uh, feature interview final message po mula sa inyo Um, gusto kong i-connect yung ano, yung issue ng forced migration sa Pilipinas sa pang sa pangkabuuan globally. Kasi hindi lang naman Pilipinas ang nag ano, nag nag nag-experience ng ganito, no? In fact, uh, at at the high level dialogue at the UN level, ginagamit na nila yung ano, yung migration mm -hmm. as a strategy for development. Una, kailangan po nating labanan at ilantad na bulok ang ganitong pa, uh, ganitong development paradigm. Kasi una-una, kaya nga umalis ang mga migrante sa kanilang bansa dahil walang development. Ngayon, parang itinuturn around ng netong mga mayayamang bansa at sabihin, "Oh, gamitin niyo yung ano, yung remittances ng mga migrante ito to develop your country." So, oxymoron 'yan. Pangalawa, Nakikita din natin yung paghigpit at saka yung mga pagbabago sa mga immigration at labor policies ng mga receiving countries na lalong pinahihirapan at lalong nai-exploit ang ating mga migrante. Ang isang malaking halimbawa diyan ay yung ano yung recently pol yung recent policies na ipinas sa British. Nang sinasabi nila hindi na nila i-save yung mga yung mga ships na nagdadala ng mga migrante from sinking or even to send you know people to to pick up the bodies ah uh, ng mga nagsink na ships parang mm -hmm. hayaan mo na lang silang mamatay kasi magiging ano pa yan magiging pabigat pa yan dun sa mga countries o kaya sa country na mag-rescue sa kanila mm -hmm. so ang panawagan ko lahat tayo ay mga migrante at makipagkapit bisig tayo sa mga migrante na galing sa ibang bansa para palakasin at boses at res resistance ng migrant workers kaya nga merong international migrant alliance at Bigyan natin ng kabuluhan kung anong ibig sabihin ng International Migrants Day. Power to the migrants. Maraming maraming salamat, Connie Sorio from International Migrants Alliance at Migrante Canada. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay kayo. Yeah, maraming salamat din. Good More night. power. Yes, okay, bye. bye. 
ayun, si Connie Sorio ng Migrante Canada at International Migrants Alliance. Kaya ito nga yung ano natin eh, ito yung uh, sinasabi natin, angkop nga talaga yung pamagat ng programa natin ngayong gabi na quote, who cares for migrants, end quote. Dahil lagi nating nasasaksihan at naririnig ang kaliwat ka ng paghihirap ng kapwa nating mga migrante at wala tayong naririnig sa gobyerno ni Binigno Simeon Aquino III kung ano ang maitutulong nila sa pagharap sa kanilang mga hinaing. Kapag nangangailangan ng tulong nga ang ating mga kababayan, e bubungad agad, agad no, yung tanong na may OWA ka ba or OWA member ka ba? Pero nasa konstitusyon na pala nakita natin na kahit wala kang OWA, may karapatan ang bawat migranteng Pilipino na humingi ng tulong sa embahada o konsulado ng Pilipinas sa angkaman na roon sa mundo. At dito po sa Radyo Migrante ay nakikibahagi kami sa mga kapo nating migrante sa inyong panawagan magkaroon ng pambansang industrialisasyon sa Pilipinas. Ibig sabihin po ay magkaroon ng maayos at disenteng hanap buhay upang hindi na magkahiwalay ang mga pamilya. At itigil na ang labor export policy gaya ho ng nabanggit ni Connie Sorio kanina kung saan ang gobyerno ng Pilipinas ay hinahayaang lumabas no ang mga Pilipino upang maghanap buhay at umaasa sila sa mga remittances para maipambayad sa utang sa International Monetary Fund at sa World Bank. Mm-hmm. Maraming salamat dun sa uh, isintesis, Rhea, at susunod, yung puso ng migrante. Nakausap natin ng ilan sa ating mga kababayan ukol sa kung gaano kahalaga no, na makibahagi tayo, makialam tayo bilang mga migrante Pilipino sa mga nangyayaring issue sa Pilipinas kahit nasa labas man tayo ng bansa. Kaya halina at pakinggan natin. ng binadang. Mahalaga sa atin, sa akin bilang migrante ang makialam um, tungkol sa mga isyo sa Pilipinas. Dahil unang-una, uh, bilang migrante, maapektuhan ako or tayo kung ano man ang isyo ng uh, dinadanas ng ating pamilya sa Pilipinas. Katulad ng pagtaas ng presyo ng langit, ito ay isang na uh, Napakalaging bagay na maapektuhan lahat ang pagtaas ng bilihin, pagtaas ng uh, matrikula para sa mga pag-aaral, at lahat ng pagtaas din ng presyo ng sa ilaw, mga tubig. Ito ay mga basic na pangangailangan ng ating pamilya. At ito ay malaking epekto dahil bilang magrigmigrante, pag-iisipan at ito yung magpapabigat sa akin o sa atin dahil kailangan natin ng pagdagdag na ipapadala sa Pilipinas na dito naman sa atin um, or sa ang ating sahod ay di naman tumataas na sa ating kinalalagyan din ay pareho din ang ating kinakakaharapang mga issue. Ako si Lorena dahil sa new president ng Eastern USA, Eastern Canada dahil sa Tampa ng Philippine Independent Church at anak ba yung Chicago. Um, importante po sa mga migrante na makialam sa issue ng pandemic sa Pilipinas dahil sa mga issue sa Pilipinas kaya naging migrante tayo. Uh, ako po si Father Dante Coloma, ang in-charge ng IFI mission ng Iglesia Pilipina Independiente dito sa Greater Toronto area. Patungkol po sa mga issues na nangyayari, lalo na sa mga pangaping nagaganap sa ating bansa, ang simbang Iglesia Pilipina Independiente po ay nakikisa po rito na ipinaglalaban at ipinagtatanggol ang karapatan ng mga magagawa, ang mga masa, ang mga taong na pagkakaitan ng hustisya. Ito po, kaya po na itatag ito, uh, in the remote past ng istorya ng aming simbahan, ito po ang kanyang ipinaglalaban. Paraming salamat po. Ako si Robert Eli, obispo po ng Iglesia Filipina Independiente ng Diocese ng Tampa, uh, USA. Bilang migrante po, patuloy po nating isulong ang ating pakitibaka tungo sa pagbabago ng ating bansa at tungo sa kapakanan ng ating uh, kapwa Pilipino sa pagtataguyod ng uh, mal, uh, masaganang kinabukasan at ng may, mapayapang uh, lipunan. Ako po si Father Art Kalaykay ng Montreal. Ako po ay uh, pari ng Iglesia Filipina Independente na 
sinasabi ni Agoncelio na isang manunulat na Buma, the only living tangible result of 1896 revolution in the Philippines, ay eh, bakit tayo makikialam sa problema sa Pilipinas na dahil dito na tayo sa abroad? Isa una, eh, tayo po ay nagpapadala pa rin ng pera at tayo concern pa rin sa Pilipinas dahil marami tayong mga kamag-anak at mga kamag-anak natin doon na nangailangan at uh, hindi tayo hiwalay sa kanilang mga problema. Kahit na dito tayo ay mas lalo pa tayong may problema sa sa kanila kung paano tayo makapadala doon. So kahit na tayo dito sa abroad, ay ang primary concern natin ay ang mga tao doon sa Pilipinas na ang pamilya natin na apektuhan ng ekonomiya, politika, at anumang mga problema sa Pilipinas. So masasabi ko lang na hindi tayo hiwalay sa problema sa Pilipinas na kahit dito na tayo sa abroad. So maraming salamat at uh, mabuhay ang iyong programa. Maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga kababayan na nagbigay ng kanilang mga opinion hinggil sa International Migrants Day. Ito po si Maru para sa puso ng Radyo Migrante. Magandang magandang uh, sal- ah, magandang magandang maraming 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 salamat <laughs> maraming salamat Ate Maru dun sa uh, panayam dun sa mga uh, nag-attend nung uh, IFI o Iglesia Filipina Independiente o Philippine Independent Church dito sa Toronto dahil naglunsad na sila ng kanilang anibersaryo at uh, inaffirm yung si Father Dante Coloma mm-hmm. maraming maraming salamat Ate Maru mm-hmm. alright so 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 anong nangyari doon sa IFF? Baka pwede mo kaming bigyan ng konting background. Yeah, uh, ay, ay yung unang ano um, mission dito sa Canada officially. Mm-hmm. At uh, lumalawak yung kanilang hanay uh, dito sa Eastern Conference which uh, includes yung ano uh, Eastern part ng North America. Kaya may kaya nandoon din si Father Robert Eli ng Florida. Uh, yun yung uh, yun yung natatanging uh, IFI owned na church sa labas ng Pilipinas ano mm-hmm. tapos nandun din yung mga taga Chicago at iba pang mga parte dito sa US at Canada mm-hmm. so bago po tayo uh, pumunta sa ating announcements magbibigay muna tayo ng isang awitin ito po kay mula kay Levi Abad at ang awitin ito ay ang tit ang pamangkat ng awitin ito ay para kay Ellen Jocelyn Sol at Juana ay naghanap ng maayos na trabaho wala pa mang tatlong buwan nagkaroon siya ng karamdaman dahil wala pa siyang ohip inabot niya ay kamatayan ganun din si Jocelyn Nagtungo ng misisaga At doon ay nagtrabaho sa Kergiber na programa Wala pa mang isang taon Sinapit niya'y kamatay